a particular category of relations which we are often interested in are equivalences. If we recall our definitions of a relation being reflexive, symmetric, anti-symmetric or transitive, an equivalence relation is one which is reflexive, is symmetric and is transitive. And if it's all three of those, then we can say it's an equivalence. An example of this is um, modular arithmetic. So I can say is congruent mod D or is equivalent mod D. And I will show that that is an equivalence relation. And recall when I had modular arithmetic, I'd say that X was congruent to Y mod D or X was equivalent to Y mod D was the same as saying that D divided Y minus X. So if I take any integer x, then clearly another non-negative integer d divides x minus x, because I can always divide 0 by another integer. So every value x is um, related to itself, so therefore the relation is reflexive. What about symmetry? Well, if x um, is y mod d, that means that y can be written as k multiples of d plus x. And if I simply rearrange that, then I can show that x can be written as k dashed multiples of d plus y, where k dashed is simply minus k. So that would also tell me that if x is congruent to y mod d, y is congruent to x mod d. So I have symmetry there. All I need now is to show transitivity. Then if x is congruent to y mod d and y is congruent to z mod d, then I know that x can be written as k1 multiples of d plus y. And I know that y can be written as k2 multiples of d plus y for integers k1 and k2. So simply pulling that through, if I do z minus x, then I've got y minus k2 lots of d minus x. So if I replace that with the statement for x, then I will get that z minus x will be minus k1 minus k2 multiples of d. So I have this transitivity. So because this congruence, this modular arithmetic is reflexive, is symmetric and is transitive, then I can say being congruent under modular arithmetic defines an equivalence relation. In a similar way to our definitions of an equivalent relation, we also have, if it satisfies three of these categories, if a relation is reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive, then we would classify it as a partial order. So the less than or equal to sign is a partial order of the set of integers. And that's because, well, every element by definition is less than or equal to itself because it's equal to itself, so it's reflexive. In general, if I've got two different integers, then if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x, well, the only way two values can both be less than or equal to each other is if they're equal to each other, if x is y. So in that case, we have anti-symmetry. And if x is less than or equal to y and y 
is less than or equal to z, then x is less than or equal to z. So here we have that we have transitivity as well. So the less than or equal to relation is a partial order. Similarly also is the greater than or equal to. Now one way that we can often visualize partial orders is on a Hasse diagram. So a Hasse diagram, and we will do a little bit more on graph theory later in this subject, but it's effectively a directed graph where the elements that may or may not be related to each other are the nodes and that we have edges and they're directed edges denoting the relation. So what we do is we don't bother to include any edges from an element to itself. Now, if it's a partial order, we do have reflexivity, but there is really no point in drawing all of these loops from each element to itself. So let's keep that simple. Um, we don't need to directly draw transitivity because that can be inferred, as we will see when we've got the diagrams. And we don't, even though we have directed edges, we don't need to draw the arrows with the directions. We kind of assume that all arrows are directed upwards rather than downwards. And you'll see what that means when we get an example of a Hasse diagram. And these things are named after this handsome devil. Look into his beautiful German eyes. Helmut Hasse, the German mathematician. I'll leave the hypnotically handsome face of Herr Helmut Hasse on your screen. And we'll introduce the set A, which is the first 10 positive integers. And I'll define the relationship R to be A is related to B when A divides B. So I want to visualize that well, 2 divides 10, 3 divides 9, 4 divides 8, 3 divides 6, 2 divides uh, 6, 2 divides 4, and that all of the prime numbers are divisible by 1. That's all I need to visualize because everything else can be inferred through transitivity. Because if I know that 2 divides 4 and 4 divides 8, the fact that I'm visualizing a partial order tells me that 2 divides 8. So I can see that from the Hasse diagram. So what does the Hasse diagram look like for this first 10 positive integers where the relation is divisibility? I'll start at the bottom with 1. Well, 1 divides 2, 1 divides 3. I don't need to visualize that 1 divides 4 because there is a larger divisor. I'll show that 4 is divisible by 2 and 2 is divisible by 1. But I do need to show that 1 divides each of the primes. So 1 divides 5, 1 divides 7. So 4 is divisible by 2, and 2 is divisible by 1, so I can show that 4 is divisible by 2 and 1 by connecting it to the 2. 6 is a bit harder because 6, I have to visualize that 6 is divisible by 2, which is also divisible by 1, and 6 is divisible by 3, which is also divisible by 1, so 6 has to be joined to 2 and to 3. 7 is already there, I don't uh, and then 8, I don't need to join 8 to 7 or 5 or 3 or 6. 8 is divisible by 4, 4 is divisible by 2, 2 is divisible by 1, so I only need to join 8 to the 4. 9 is only divisible by 3, which itself is divisible by 1, so I can connect it to the 3. 
And then 10, again, is a bit more complicated because 10 is divisible by 5, which is divisible by 1, and 10 is divisible by 2, which is divisible by 1. So 10 will need to go uh, like that. So it's a little bit messier uh, with the lines crossed, but that is one representation of the divisibility uh, partial order in a Hassett diagram.